Welcome to the Northwood News. My name is Khaled. Representing the 519, February 3rd, Day 1, Schools Council. Meet at the 6 p.m. February 4th, Day 4. It's pizza day. Yum, yum. I want some. Remember to always to scan in the 519. Breaking news. There has been reports of criminal activity downtown. Fahad, tell us more. Why, thank you, Andy. As you can see, they appear to be conducting some sort of dance ritual. Go ahead and take a look for yourself. Burger King has gone rogue, spreading terror throughout the hallways of Northwood. Is there anyone who can put a stop to him? You have succumbed to the darkness, but I will bring you back. Jessup is here to help me defeat Burger King once and for all. Jessup is a villain to help me destroy the heroes and the school. The good word is if you try hard, you'll succeed. Good. The good word is that we're learning directions. The good word. The good word is that we're learning how to tell time in a different way. The good word. The good word is I like my school. What was the good word? The good word is everybody been listening. Ask Miss Pfeiffer it's uh, sportive. Miss Pfeiffer's class is really athletic. Samir has $1,001 and Logan has $999. The question's asking us how many more dollars does Samir have than Logan? Now, when we rush towards algorithms too quickly and we have students focus on things like keywords, they might see the word more and attempt stacking the quantities and then attempting to add since the word more is often associated with addition. They might even use the addition algorithm correctly by properly carrying all of the new units of 10 over to the appropriate place value column. But unfortunately, the result is extremely unreasonable as they've solved a completely different problem. So let's assume that the student does realize that this is a subtraction problem where we're comparing two sets. We often believe that algorithms in mathematics are always most efficient, but that's simply not true. For example, in this case, when we blindly follow an algorithm to solve the problem, this child will actually have to perform a considerably larger number of steps in order to find an answer than had they been more flexible with their understanding of subtraction. For example, when we try subtracting 9 from 1 and we don't have enough, we'll have to look over to the tens column. But oh no, there's still not enough. So what do we do? We look over to the hundreds column. Oh no, there's still not enough. Luckily, there is a 1 in the thousandths column. That means I have a single group of 1,000, which is the same as me taking that 1,000 and trading it in for 10 
hundreds. Now that means I can then go ahead and say, now I have enough in that hundreds column to borrow into the tens column. So I go ahead and I take my 10 hundreds. I now have nine hundreds left and now I have 10 tens, which is equivalent to 100. And then I can borrow that and bring it on over to the ones column. I now have, I now have 10 ones that I can add to the ones column, which is a total of 11. And I can go ahead and do my subtraction. And now I have 11 minus nine is two. Nine tens minus nine tens is zero. I have nine hundreds minus nine hundreds, which is also zero. And we have zero thousandths left. So my result is two. Wow, that was a lot of work in order for me to get a result of just two. Now imagine if we had focused on building a conceptual understanding of subtraction. Students who have developed flexibility with number sense would be able to quickly see in their mind's eye that 1001 is only two jumps to the right on a number line. From 999 to 1101. Or if students are comfortable using compensation, the idea that if we add one to the subtrahend, that we can compensate for this change by adding one to the minuend, will end up in the same spot with a difference of $2 between Samir and Logan. Please stand for the singing of our national anthem. Would you rescue me? Would you rescue me when I'm by myself? When I need your love, if I 